It was a uh, back and forth game tonight. I, you know, again, we're, we're just not in a place right now where we can gain separation. Uh, we're just not there yet. But you know, I want I want to I want to talk about our men. You know, we, we lose by you know however many points to Houston. The sky's falling in. Uh, and, you know, everybody's flipping out. But but our guys, if you look at the time we've been together, every time we have a game like that, we always bounce back the next game because of the character and toughness of our team. And, you know, I thought you know, obviously in spots we looked young, and in spots we made some really poor decisions. But the bottom line is we gritted out a, a tough win on the road, um, you know, with a lot of games this week. So really proud of the tenacity and toughness that this team showed. Uh, a lot of frustration after the Houston loss. Uh, I tried to explain to them we just won four straight. And I thought Central Florida was, of all the games, we played the best in for the most uh, period of time. And that we don't need the Houston game to, to identify us. That's, that's not going to define us. And uh, I thought our guys came out, played well together. We got, we got good quality minutes from the guys on the bench. And at the end of the day, Keith Williams made a ton of plays offensively. And it came down to our defense at the end. Coach, you go down one on the, the – right there in the final few minutes. You go with a, a trap and don't foul. Uh, just take us through that that little segment right there where you, know, you decide to, to let your defense try to make a play, and, and ultimately they do. Well, you know, we wanted to get a trap and see if we could make a play first and then foul. Um, so uh, give, give Jeremiah and, uh, and, and Mike a credit. Uh, you know, a lot of times when you break open to catch the ball, you get fouled immediately. Uh, we just never really done that. We wanted, we, we knew we'd had enough time with 18 seconds. So it was going to be a one possession game regardless of what happened. Um, so we went for a quick one. We were able to get the steal. And then we were able to get back quick enough without matchups being right to get a stop at the rim. Thought we had the rebound. Don't get the ball off video. And we were still able to get a stop. You know, we, we changed uh, guys in and out of the game a little bit. And we were able to get a stop late on the under OB. How big were the shots from Mason in the first half, Jeremiah in the second half uh, from three to kind of get the offense moving and, and kind of create some space on Tulsa and really keep them from packing in that zone that they want to play? Yeah, that was huge. I and mean, he was able to, to, to kind of supplant the fact that we you know, were down. He was able to stabilize us. He was able to keep us in the game and get a lead. And then every time he came in after that, they had to go man. And he was like Javen, you know, just spaced the floor. You know, he didn't get many shots after that. He was able to space the floor for the other guys to make plays. And that's the reason we recruited him and his brother, you know, to make shots and make plays. And, you know, I think Mason's the guy who will eventually, you know, be a playmaker and do some other things. But I was proud of all our guys. You know, Tari coming in the game. I know late there we had a few mistakes. You know, Mike threw a ridiculous pass, lob pass all the way across the court. Uh, I don't know why I didn't take him out. I guess I love him so much and believe in him. And then the son of a gun hits a big three in the corner and uh, gets a defensive stop. So uh, we got a lot of a lot of learning to do. Made a lot of young mistakes late in the second half. I'll tell you one thing that happened. Uh, so you guys know and our fans, we were uh, we were in man defense. We were getting stops in our man, and then we went zone and they hit a three. You remember that? It was like it was like really what got their run going a little bit. I yelled out to K two. Keith, Keith Williams goes by K two. I said, I yelled K2, a media's coming. Was, the, the shot was made at the 805 mark. I said, K2, a, a media's coming. I need you to go as hard as you can on one more possession, you get a blow. They thought I said two defense. So they came down and hit a two. And I looked at their assistant. I'm like, is this, is this just the way the year's going to be? We're, 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 we're talking to our players, yet we're, they think we're calling zone defenses out. And I totally understand why. So just so you know, we're, we're not crazy when we go five straight stops and then go two defense for uh, no reason at all. Coach Keith had 24, but also six assists. Felt like maybe his best passing game, and he showed a little bit against UCF with that too. Was that is that just a change in approach for him or for you guys? Well, you know, he's the first, he's number one usage rate in the conference, and he shot 24 shots tonight. He's one of the most used players in the country. I think we should, we finally were able to see, he was able to see on video how many times when he catches the ball, it's go time, and the defense knows it too, so they're running two at it. And he's got teammates not only that are good players, but they make great cuts and are good finishers. So he's now starting to realize to read the defense. And when you do that, now it becomes a problem on the defense. So, you know, when we went on that run there, it was all Keith. We, put, we kept putting Keith in ball screens and Mike was cutting. Chris Vogt was doing a great job of ball screen and hard diving. And I really thought we were able, I thought if we just scored a little bit more at the end, we would have sustained it. But then we just went cold and guys started getting a little worried and concerned and we started missing free throws. And you know, eight of 17 is not gonna win on the road in close games. Coach, you're winning these close games. You were losing these early on. Is that just growth and maturity of your guys throughout the season? 
Well, I think a little bit of that, Keith. You know, I, I think if you look back, we won a lot of close games the last two years. Um, and I think in large part, the guys understand what they need to do at the end of games and aren't afraid to do it. And then sometimes it's the bounce of the ball, right? I'm not going to say it isn't. You know, basketball is a little different sport. Sometimes that ball just doesn't go in the rim like it does other times. And uh, But, you know, like Chris coming into the game at the end, providing us a defensive length around the rim, we had five guards, and that's a big play. Or you know, us be able to deny the under OB to the point where they catch it beyond half court, okay? That automatic, I tell the guys all the time, I'm a baseball fan. Two strikes on the batter, who has the advantage, right? The pitcher. So let's put ourselves in the advantage as much as possible. And the play like that, where they catch the ball on the backcourt, and all of a sudden we have the advantage for that play. And uh, that's really kind of the way basketball works. Coach, you called a 30 second timeout, a little over six minutes left. You seem, I think you guys were up seven. You seemed like you had a specific point you wanted to make. Do you remember that moment and, and what that was? Oh, yeah. We weren't playing hard defensively. You know, I, I, we're not a team that's going to sustain scoring for long periods of time. And I didn't say that to him, but I called him and I said, like, we're not playing hard defensively. So we can, we can come up with all these different defenses to play and, and, and do all this stuff, but it doesn't matter until you guys lock in. And then Keith said something to the guys, and I thought they locked in after that. Anything else? Long term, what does it say for this team to, you had things go wrong, and it, this team could have, packed it in after the charge call and being down by one and and not finishing and that they answered that they they didn't hang their head and found a way to to pull it out no question it's it, it, it says that you know we were able to come back from houston and do all the things you just said chat it says that you know we got some guys on this team that understand what it takes more importantly they're bought into each other and they're bought into to what we're doing and we may not always look at we may not always execute we're young and we're in COVID and those things are real. And I probably, I spent the last two days, it was frustrating for me because I wasn't, I didn't see the game the way I normally see it because I couldn't prepare for Tulsa because we were doing all mental stuff this week. We were just trying to get everybody on the same page and make sure everybody was locked in. And it goes back to character, you know, the character of our young men and their toughness. And, you know, each time we've had to answer the bell, they've done that particularly since we've been out of our pause and, you know, it bodes well for our future because a lot of these young guys are making plays and being put in very difficult situations. Now, as I told them after the game, there's nothing wrong with winning by 10 or 15 because at this point in the game, I'd like to sit down and just kind of watch the last two minutes. But for some reason, we're just not there yet. Excited to see more from it. I think so. I think, you know, they didn't, they, they talked a little bit about it, but they haven't really been locked into it yet. You know, we play at four o'clock because of the fact that we play at one o'clock on Sunday. So we're trying to make sure we get enough rest in between both games. You know, the 1,100 people that are coming, I don't know how many the exact number is, but uh, please come and be loud. If you're not willing to be loud, then, um, you know, uh, have somebody else come, please, because there, there's a difference between 1,100 and 300. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach.